leaving the cathedral, we look at the Piazza del Duomo with its equestrian statue of Victorio Emmanuel II, and something really important. So much for the world's second largest church, here's something of greater significance yet, the world's first large shopping mall, the famous Galleria of Milano, lorded over by these old-fashioned looking policemen who are ready to maintain order and discipline and be sure that the shoppers have a peaceful place for their activities. This is one of the finest expressions of the early industrial age architecture with the welding of steel and glass together forming this giant dome and covered arcade. Built in the 1860s, it's not the world's first covered shopping mall. The Burlington Arcade in London might lay claim to that distinction in 1820. However, here we are after the Crystal Palace of 1850 in London, finding the ultimate expression of the covered shopping gallery in the Galleria of Milano. It was designed by Giuseppe Mignoni and built with English finance and epitomizes the outstanding contribution of the first industrial age to urban architecture. As Karl Marx put it a decade earlier, the bourgeoisie has accomplished wonders far surpassing Egyptian pyramids, Roman aqueducts, and Gothic cathedrals. In a word, it creates a world after its own image. And even a hundred years later, the space still adapts itself to modern needs. Here we see a multimedia giant video display and surrounded by some of the most expensive boutiques in the city. The finest jewelry shops and watch stores are located here. You have a great selection of books from various bookstores, map shops, clothing stores. There's banks where you can change your money. And there's a lot of cafes where you can just sit down and pass the time of day with a pot of tea, perhaps, or a gourmet lunch. This venerable arcade provides a center for urbane living, both comfortable and magnificent, that has not been surpassed. Today, this glassed-in street is a center for both cultural and mundane activities that's a real tribute to the extraordinary genius and technical skill of the architects of 100 years ago. It's simply one of the finest urban spaces any place in the world. It's been copied in city after city. There's another great Galleria in Naples. There's another great Galleria in Rome. They even have a fast food hamburger joint where we catch our Hawaii group enjoying an American meal. This little restaurant also has the cleanest restrooms ever found in Italy. It's right at the crossing of the Galleria. Refreshed and fortified with our fix of French fries, we now venture forth into the streets of Milan. We've got about five hours to walk around the city and enjoy some of its shopping treats and other historical monuments, so we'll devote the rest of our program to the scenic highlights of this great center of industry and fashion and commerce. A large part of the central city is devoted to the pedestrian. There's always the huge newsstands and more covered gallerias on the little side streets. They've continued the theme of the great galleria throughout the center of the city. So no cars are allowed in this very pleasant pedestrian zone. The dazzling mosaic of marble sidewalk reminds you that you're in one of the world's capitals of design. And right in the heart of Milan, we find this stately neoclassical church of San Carlo al Corso. The building was put up between 1832 and 1847, and the distinctive vaulted dome was built in 1844. Continuing along the pedestrian Corso Porto Venezia, we soon come to a typical fast food cafe. Amico is a chain that you'll find throughout the city. And you see here the prices are quite reasonable, ranging from $3 on up to $5 for a typical sandwich or a salad. The food here is affordable, tasty, fast and easy. You just walk in and point at what you want. You go over to the cashier and pay for it and come back with your ticket. And you can stand up at the front counter if you wish to just have a meal on your feet. Or you can sit down in the back room and pay a little bit more money, spend a little bit more time with your meal. Either way, it's a refreshing pick-me-up on your tour of Milan. Lunch Italian style. 
Notice here they're all standing in line at the cashier. As typical of all the cafes in Italy and throughout the continent, you pay your money to the cashier and hand the ticket to the food clerk. They don't mix money and food here. Continuing along the way, we come to another very charming little pedestrian street. This is a street with some high fashion boutiques on it. Via del Spiga is very pleasant for once again there's no automobiles allowed so it makes for some fine window shopping even on a Sunday when all the stores are actually closed. It's a lot cheaper to be walking on such a day. Milan is one of the most elegant shopping venues in the world with the tradition of Bond Street of London, the chic of Faubourg Saint Honoré from Paris and the glitz of Beverly Hills. Milan is Italy's New York. It's the capital of fashion and it certainly is a rival to Paris as the world center of high fashion. No fashion designer or stylist or interior decorator or architect has made it until he has made it in Milan. They really have a fine sense of style. If you've heard of the high fashion boutiques of Milan and looked forward to finding them, this is where you'll see them on Via della Spiga and the nearby Via San Andrea and particularly via Monte Napoleone and the little side streets that come off of this main boulevard. Milan is a window shopper's paradise with each store vying with the next to see whose wares are displayed with the most pizzazz. And it's quite interesting just to observe the people walking along these streets. They're quite elegantly attired. And even the policemen have that fine sense of style as we've seen earlier. The most frequent in parts of Milan are right in the heart of the city here. Along with the Galleria near the cathedral, the Milanese come to talk or read in the various cafes, and fashionable shops are also to be found on the Corso Vittorio Emanuele and the Corso Venezia. And there's a lot of antique shops as well as the high fashion boutiques. There are some inexpensive little cafes in the neighborhood, delicatessen type stores with takeout foods, and there are just a few small elegant restaurants scattered through this neighborhood, perhaps one every three blocks, so they might be a little hard to find. But one of the nicest ways to find good local restaurants is simply to ask people. Stop people on the street, especially if they're not in a big hurry, and ask directions. Uh, could you tell me where there's a fine restaurant? And you'll get into some interesting conversations that way. Now here's a little fashion shoot on the streets of Milan. You know this city is a world fashion capital and so you find a lot of the trade at work here. There's photographers and models working right on the streets of Milan, shooting a magazine spread and watch this interesting way they try and capture the feeling of motion for the still photographer. It's right on the daily streets. A few people stop and take notice. A few tourists with their cameras stop and take pictures, but otherwise People just walk by and ignore. This is a fact of everyday life in Milan. High fashion. Looks like they're practicing for a relay race. Set amidst the glorious architecture of the city. Milan is very much a center of business and trade. It's so fascinating to see the mix of fantasy and reality that the tourist always runs into in Italy. The high fashion, ultra modern, along with the antique and the ancient, the world of business and finance mixed in with the tourist attractions of the visitor. Here's some antique trolleys still running through the center of town, running into the ancient wall, the old Roman wall that still surrounds large parts of the city. Milan has always played a very important role in the economy and in the politics of the region. Milan is probably of Celtic origin originally thousands of years ago, but it was the Romans who really subdued the city in the second century BC. And then it became very important to the Roman Empire starting in the year 305 because at that time it became the capital of the Roman Empire itself. When the emperors moved out of the city of Rome, they moved into Milan and stayed there for a hundred years from 300 till 400 AD. 
And the most important event that happened during that time was the proclamation of the Edict of Milan by the Emperor Constantine. This took place in the year 312, and it officially legalized the Christian religion. For the first time, the government of Rome recognized the religion of Christ. And the proclamation was made in a church here that's still standing, and just a little bit later in the program we'll be visiting that church, San Ambrogio. But for now we're still walking down through the fashion center of the city, Great place for leather goods, especially shoes, handbags, belts, and purses. High fashion gear of all sorts, and it's not all super expensive. You can actually find sales. At the end of every season, there's big clearances and closeouts. We're continuing our walk now down Via Manzoni, and this appears to be the liveliest and busiest of all the commercial shopping streets, and yet you can poke your head down these little alleyways into the beautiful arcades and gardens behind the palaces. There's little oases of tranquility just right off of the main street. A place for cats to spend their time of day and surrounded by fences so they're protected from the city. This was a 17th century row of palaces that's been converted into the shops and restaurants that we find today on the main, very busy street of Via Manzoni. Protected cloisters and beautiful gardens, marvelous neoclassical architecture all around you. It's one of the fine spots of Milan. And there's more quiet little side streets just off the main busy boulevard.